Hi everyone, welcome to another um, colouring page. Um, this one is from Matchstick Mouse's The Floral Colouring Book. Now these are obviously um, sort of spring summery type pictures mainly, but this one I thought would be quite nice to be done in an autumnal palette um, because we have um, Little Mouse having a warm drink and it's raining. So I thought it would be fun. So I am going to come in a little bit closer and show you basically how you can turn any page really into an autumnal page. It's just come out a tad. There we go. Now the first thing, um, yes, we're using our Arteza Expert Pencils, just so you know. I'll tell you that first. And then we're going to start with the wall. Now, if you, um, oh, it isn't on this one. Um, Morgan O'Brien often does his walls in a orangey colour, hang on, a brownish colour like this, as if it's inside. So I'm going to do a similar thing here and I think that also gives an autumnal feel to the page. So I'm going to start with a, hmm, yeah, we'll start with the cinnamon and we'll do all of the wall and then we'll, then we'll come in and just put a few other tones in. Now this is quite orangey actually, isn't it? But that's okay. Because I'm thinking this is probably supposed to be like inside a tree stump or inside a tree trunk, something like that. So it's going to be brown and that's how um, Morgan O'Brien does them. Um, he's got a new Christmas book out. Um, I don't know if you've probably seen it, but it's a story book rather than a colouring book. There is a Christmas Matchstick Mouse colouring book. I do have that one and I will be doing plenty from there um in december it's not quite december yet but the um the christmas storybook is new for this year and uh i have seen all of the illustrations from that book um i have a bit of secret squirrel news about that i can't tell you yet first of december there's something very exciting coming to my channel so I'll just leave it there. But um, the Christmas book, um, most of the pictures are inside the sort of burrow, I guess it is. Nest? Hmm. Anyway, <laughs> mice live in have nests, but this isn't really a nest, is it? It's got much bigger than that. Anyway, and all of them have this sort of brownish background. I'm trying to work out what that is. I'm going to colour that as a little shelf, I think, that the plate is on. It would sort of make sense. But let's make that the back. I think, hmm, I'm trying to work out what here. Is that a cushion and that's the floor, I think. So I'm going to colour that as floor. Sometimes you have to just work it out. I found this with every illustrator, it's anybody. Right, so that's our basic. Now it's darker here. And that's because I want to make the edge darker. And I've only just done it there. I shall come in with a darker colour. I'm going to use the permanent brown to actually do a darker edge. On all of it like I did here. It would all match in the end. I hope. <laughs> but yeah I'm gonna start my Christmas colouring on the 1st of December. Um, I, I have had people say I'll oh, start on the 25th and do it for a month um, but I will do wintry stuff all through December. You know, Christmas East, for me, Christmas doesn't end till New Year. So there'll be all sorts of things. I haven't quite planned. I have got some plans, but not everything. I tend to, I tend to plan a little bit and then I sort of um, decide what I'm in the mood for as well. I'm hoping to get all my um, Christmas colouring done quite early, actually, so that I can um, have a little bit of a break from video making over Christmas. Now... It's not because I dislike it in any way, I love it, but I will have the family home. I'm going back to my cinnamon now. What I'm going to do is go back over this bit and just tidy it all up. Um, yeah, I have the family home and I'm not sure how long for. I will have um, various social things to do as well. But also I find that even though I don't feel like I need a break from recording, if I have a little break, I sort of feel fresh when I come back so uh, that I sort of um, miss it and then have a new enthusiasm if that makes any sense so uh, that will be something but I don't know how long I'll take off it will just all depend on how the 
um, time goes really. I mean, we've got, I've got a few plans in place at the minute. So, I mean, social plans, you know, seeing family and get togethers, but there will be more that will be made. I know for sure, because um, I haven't made plans with father-in-law yet. And uh, he usually has something going on, which is nice. Right, that. I'm going to, um, I don't feel like it's dark enough around here, so I've grabbed my permanent brown again. Oops, I'm going to do a little bit more. Now, I've done it like this because we've got our circle shape. I think it can be quite nice to have it almost framed with a slightly darker bit. It doesn't necessarily make sense for the way it would be in this room. I mean, it would be lighter around the window and things like that. Okay, I'm going back to the cinnamon now. I'm just going to go back over that a little bit. But uh, I just think emphasising that circle shape can be nice. There are lots of different ways you can colour the um, backgrounds on these. And what's quite nice is because they are small, the background isn't quite so daunting. And I have seen people do this whole outside bit as well. Um, with various details or um, just some sort of pastels. I say just, it's not always that easy. Pastels and a stencil, things like that, but not. I'm not doing that today. I've not done that before on these books, so it's not. Just making that a bit more even, it's a bit messy. I realise we've got circles and things like this drawn in. I'm not I'm colouring over them at the moment. I will come in and fill them in in a minute. We haven't done that bit darker. Let's grab our permanent brown again. Just do that, fade it a bit so it's a little bit dark on the edge. And we're nearly there. There. Now what I'm going to do, oh, just gonna tidy up over here. Put my pencils down, there we go. I'm just going to get a slightly lighter colour to go over it. It will pull it together and um, tidy it up and make it slightly brighter. And I'm going to use the terracotta light and basically just go over it all. You can see there's a lot of yellow in it, so it really brightens it up, which I really like. And I'm just going to sort of follow this um, all the way around, really. Then we'll do the details and the window frame, and we can move on to the um, to the to the little cute part. <laughs> I tend to like to get a background done first in most pictures. Um, people often ask, "Do you do it first or last?" There's no rule as to whether you should do it first or last, but I would always say, "Plan it first. Think about what you're going to do." If I did this first. And I use these colours that I'm using for the background for the mouse, let's say. Then when I di did the background, the mouse might sort of fade back and disappear and it just might not work. Um, also, sometimes if you use background colours that are too bright or background details, the foreground won't stand out. So there's that as well. So think about, I mean, you don't have to commit to a background, so you can think, if I'm going to do a background for this picture, what colour would I do? Say, so, mm, i do it green. Okay, well, what shade of green might I do, light or dark? Okay, I'll do it dark green. Right, so I need to make sure that in my picture I avoid using too much dark green or else when I put my background in, those dark green areas might just fade away. So that's the sort of conversation I have with myself. Not out loud. Well, maybe. Shh. <laughs> So that that is what I would recommend thinking about. But you don't have to do it to start with. And of course, just by thinking about, I'm just grabbing my terracotta light and you're doing the bit I missed there. Just by thinking about it doesn't mean you have to do it. Now I'm going to grab a dark brown. I'm just looking at what I've got. I'm probably going to use this burnt umber. And I'm going to do these details. So these and rocks. I'm just going to try and do them a little darker around the edge than the centre. Because this is a dark colour, it will sit on top of the um, of the colours we've done already, as long as you haven't pressed mega hard. I'm going to do this sort of bit of root 
in the same way. See, this must be underground, mustn't it? Because you've got roots. There we go. Now you could do these bits too, but I think I'm going to leave those. Okay, where are we at? Yes. Going to use the permanent brown to do the window frame, to start the window frame. So on a fairly good layer, but don't I don't want to press it so hard that I've got no tooth left because I'm going to add another colour in. So I'm going to put enough down so that if you were only doing one layer, you would be happy. But I'm going to add another one. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> just realised it sounds a bit not like nonsense, doesn't it? I'm trying to think about what to do outside the window because obviously it's raining, it'd be quite grey. We could just do a bit of a grey, miserable looking thing. Um, it's not very autumnal, but then sky isn't really, unless we do like a sunset, but I don't think that's going to work. It would take too much from our foreground, I think. And I don't think you really get a good sunset when it's raining because of the cloud. OK, back to my dark burnt umber. I was going to say dark umber. And what I want to do with my window frame is to make it a little bit darker on the edge of each piece and then fade that slightly in towards the middle so that we get hmm, a bit of a... Hopefully it looks like the wood isn't completely flat pieces. So I'm thinking I want to try and make them look like they're sort of more like logs or branches rather than planks. I don't know if that makes sense. So by just adding a darker bit around the edge you can just make it look a little bit more rounded. And it really is quite simple. I think so anyway. There we go. That's it. I'm going to keep that really easy. Now the sky. I'm going to do it now because I think I might forget. I'm thinking a brownie grey might be best. So I'm going to grab my charcoal grey if I can find it. But it's quite dark. Oh, oh, oh that, that was the right way. Um, <laughs> I don't want it too thick. I'm going to do it in a circular motion to make it look like loud. And the reason I want it brownish rather than a cold grey, a bluey grey, is because I want it to sort of match in with our brown background a bit better. I know it's a bit contrived, but hopefully it won't look too bad in that sense. Now, mouse I often colour brown as well. But we've got, because I've got the 72 set of Arteza experts, I've got quite a good choice of browns, so I am going to do mouse in the brown colour. I'm going to do mouse next. Now, what I, how I like to do her is I like to choose two shades, a lighter and a darker. I've just these are my last two um, lighter browns. I've got a yellow ochre and a sepia, and that's what I'm going to use for her. The lighter one I tend to do. Whoop, that one's running away on her face and her chest if it's showing and then the darker one on the fur. So we're going to use the lighter one. Now, this is quite blunt, and I think that will probably work better. I'm going to do a circular mo movement. I can see the texture of the paper through, and that's absolutely perfect, because I want it to look like we can see her short fur on her face. Now, if you look at her on the front cover, she's got a white bit there, where the feathers come out. I'm not going to leave that white in mine. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Um, I have been known to colour a picture that, to copy the cover to make the picture look the same, that's good fun. But um, I'm going to do it my own way today and not copy her. What I tend to do is make her look different in every picture. Sometimes she's grey, sometimes she's brown. And you're asking, why do I know she's a she? Well, if you look on Morgan O'Brien's website, there's a little bit about her, that she's a little witch, and it says that she's a she, so there we go. Uh, I'm thinking that bit might be light-ish there, but I'm now going to grab my sepia and do the furry bits. Now, you could try and do lines like this to make the fur look a bit more furry. I think that's all blanket. 
Mm, or it, yeah, it's not always easy to tell what's quite going on. There we go. We do the top of the ear because I know that's definitely fur. There we go, and down here, and then this bit. Now there'd be a little bit of shadow underneath the blanket, you could do that a little bit darker. I think I'm going to keep it a bit simpler and not worry too much about that. We've already got a fairly thick black line drawn there anyway, which could just be shadow rather than the edge of the blanket, you know, so I'm happy with that. Now you could come on here with the black or a dark brown pen and draw in fur, but I actually think that's okay, I'm going to do a darker bit just down there, not too dark, just for a bit of shadow. I think that's better. Now we haven't, I'm pretty sure that's a cushion, not part of her. Um, sorry, I'm just going to blow my nose. I'm going to choose a colour for her hands and ears and nose. Um, let's have a look. I think that colour, I'm not sure if I want a light peach or a sort of coral or pink. I think we'll go for the we'll go for the peach because it's slightly more autumnal. In my head, autumnal is orange browns. So if we go for the light peach rather than the pink, I think it will work better with um with the other colours I've got planned as well. So there is I'm doing her nose like that. Now with a pastely shade, it's a lot harder to actually um, get differentiation in colour when you're using just this one pencil. I can build up the layers a little bit here and do a bit less towards the end of the ear but it doesn't show up I don't think as much as with a much more intense pencil but it's okay. I don't need massive um, difference in colour anyway I just think it'd be a little bit darker in this bit and then I'll come down and do her fingers like that there we go now we haven't done this shelf here and I think I should do that um, in a similar colour to the window so what did I use permanent brown first so I'm going to do that I don't I think it's a cushion it's a cushion isn't it Nope, okay, I've hardly touched it, so I'm just going to erase that bit. You can't really see it. There we go. Right, now, Mouse's face colour, this bit, I think looks quite similar to the colour I want to do the cookies. So I'm going to do that, so yellow ochre. Oops. I'm going to do the cookies. But press a little bit harder, so it doesn't look like it's exactly the same colour. You can see this bit under here has got some shadow drawn on it, so it's going to be even darker like that. It's really simple. I might just do them a little dark on the edges, but really, it's quite straightforward. Oatmeal cookie. Okay. Now she's drinking out of what I think is an acorn shell, so I think that's going to be quite dark. So I'm going to come back to my burnt umber and do that. Now with the cup, I want to emphasise how rounded it is, so I'm going to lighten my colour towards the middle, but quite subtly because an acorn shell, I don't know if you are familiar with what they look like, but then very, very unreflective. They wouldn't be shiny at all. They're very um, almost um, sort of furry in texture, not quite, but so they wouldn't reflect light in the way that something porcelain or a metallic would do but I'm just trying to make them a little darker on the edge by layering up a little bit more brown just so that it looks more round but I need to make sure that there's enough there so as I say it doesn't look like it's shining but just that it's this sort of shadow. Mm, a little bit more, I think. There 
there she is. Now inside her cup she's going to have a cup of tea. I think the biscuit colour is quite good for the tea actually. So I'm going to grab that yellow ochre again. It's not, for me this isn't yellow, it's very brown. There we go. So she's got a milky cup of tea. Mmm, delish. <laughs> right, we have a blanket. Um, I'm going to do the blanket first and then decide on the cushion colours. I haven't thought about the plate yet. Um, I'm thinking the main colour I should really think of quite quickly. This looks like a crochet blanket. Isn't it? I'm thinking yellows and oranges might work, nice and autumnal. So let's grab um, this golden yellow Oops. and do the centres of the flowers, I think, in this. Going to have to layer it up a bit. It isn't that bright. Some of the flowers don't have centres, so I'm not doing them. I'm sure this looks like um, one of those crochet blankets made up of little squares. They think how tiny they would be. She's a mouse. Be teeny weeny. There. Now we see the flowers. You see, we have a sort of petals, and then we have a background, and then another back. There's a lot of colours going on in this. Um, I am thinking I might do the background of the whole blanket in a yellow as well. So use the cadmium yellow for the background part. So this bit here behind the sort of design or make it yellow. I just love the sort of warming autumnal colours. Now I'm going to do quite flat colouring because I'm thinking about yarn or wool, whatever you might call it, um, that you use for crochet or knitting or whatever. It's not very reflective, it's not going to change colour massively depending on the light. So we can make it really easy and just colour just plain colouring, or oh, you know, just get some colour down there. I'm going to try and keep it fairly even, but you know, it's not going to matter if you don't. It will look like it's a little crinkle in the blanket. She looks so cosy, doesn't she? I love nothing more than cuddling up in a, under a blanket. When I uh, watch TV on Saturday nights, um, I always watch my um, Strictly Come Dancing programme, and I love being able to. See this bit, I'm going to do it the same colour as this. Can you see it sort of leads in? So this is just the background for the, these big flowery bits. I love nothing more than curling up on the sofa under a blanket. It's so nice and cosy. But uh, it's been a bit warm. I mean, maybe not by the time this video goes out. But uh, again, it's a bit too warm to always sit under a blanket. But uh, sometimes I just do anyway, even though it's a bit warm. Just because it's so cosy. Here, my boiler's coming on. I'm sure it's um, not due to be on. Mm, maybe it goes off very soon. Just seeing if I've missed any bits. See, I don't know what this bit is. I think I might just do this bit and this bit. Uh, yeah, and this bit. I don't really know what's going on there so we'll just fill that in. Okay now I'm sort of moving along the colours really in my tin and I've got a Naples yellow next. I'm thinking um, maybe for these a Naples yellow. I think that looks quite nice. You can see the difference between the two yellows. That is good. So, hmm. so it's. I find it interesting because being a floral book, you would expect it to be all um, real flowers, whereas I think it's very inventive um, having sort of crochet flowers in a picture, um, which is rather nice. And uh, um, all these. Um, so I think that's very cool. It's a very good idea. Okay, we need some orange. Now we have got here, I've got two oranges, yeah. We've got the 
um, marigold, which is slightly lighter orange. Um, I'm trying to decide. I think I'll put the slightly lighter orange here. I'm trying to check what I'm doing because this one, this flower, has only got the one colour like that. Whereas this one, the rest of all got two. So, hmm. That one's only got one as well. Maybe I'll make this the um, inside colour, the first colour. So that one. And then the outside one in my next colour. We've got a few different colours we can use still. I'm sure if you've got the 120 set of Arte's Expert, you'll have a little bit more choice. I would imagine there would be more um, oranges, but um, I think this will be plenty. 72 is quite a good number of pencils. You can always mix and match sets. People get a little bit frightened and they think, they have to use just one set of pencils. You really don't. I I used to always mix Polys and Ergosoft when they were the only two sets of pencils I had, and they work beautifully together. But now I have lots of sets. I struggle a little bit. I'm going to use Cadmium Orange Deep to fit them on my desk. So I tend to use just one set. I always do in videos as well, just because if someone's searching for videos of a particular pencil set, It'd be really annoying if you're like, oh good, a Black Widow's set pet video, oh they've used some polys with it and I haven't got them. Do you know what I mean? So I try and keep it a little bit, um, keep them separated. But when I'm colouring myself, just for myself, I, you know, I don't worry about mixing them up. But as I said, I can, I run out of room. I used to keep a tin of Ergus off one side of my desk and a tin of polys the other open and just dive in. But now I've got diff lots of different sets. I uh, I can't keep them out all the time. It's also a lot tidier to put them away. Plus, leaving Ergosoft open is a really bad idea because it get all sticky and dusty and horrible. I've just had to go through my Ergosoft tin getting rid of all the sticky ones. So, ugh. My husband's got loads of spares. So... When I say loads, I mean he bought packs of 12 of certain colours. So when he had a pack of 12 and I had a short sticky one, I was like, Bleh. I'm just going to grab my um, marigold again just to do the bottom of this one. I was a bit slack and didn't do that bit. So, yeah, I had a quick... I was, I'm lucky that we've got some spares. Um, he's very naughty. If he likes something, he will buy a lot of it. So when his journal is nearly running out, he won't buy one spare, he'll buy three. Oh, because I like them and they might sell out. It's like, yeah, but, 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 but. <laughs> now I've got a peach colour here and I think it's a bit too, um, a bit too pink. I'm just going to, yeah, it is. So I'm not going to use that. Um, I think I may have run out of. Oh, I've got a cadmium orange light. That looks really pink. Mm, it's a bit wishy-washy. I'm not going to use that. Right, we're going to go back and use something we've used already because I've run out of colours, which is absolutely fine. Um, I'm thinking maybe one of the warm browns might work. We don't want the ones that we coloured mouse with. The cinnamon was the main background colour. But maybe that, maybe the terracotta light might work. I think we'll try that. Okay. And we're going to do it for all of the rest of this blanket. And it's the colour I used to brighten this background. So because that colour, when it was used there, it was mixed in with so many other colours looks a bit different, so that's good. Oh, what time is it? 10 o'clock. I feels like it's coffee time. Um, hmm, I think it is. Tea or coffee? I'm not sure which. 
I actually had some workmen in yesterday. That was the first time this month. And it is the uh, 17th. So I haven't had anyone in for about a month, to be honest. So it's getting a bit frustrating. Um, but they're the carpenters. They finished up nearly everything. They put my blind up, which was nice. They fixed a few, all sorts of little tiny bits and pieces, basically. And now I'm still waiting for the radiator to be changed. Um, I've been trying to... I chased my plumber because they're my the fitter's plumber is off ill. My plumber's too busy. Um, he told me to call someone else who I filled in their online form, have heard nothing back, rang them, they didn't answer their phone. But I think all plumbers are busy. So that was a bit annoying. So I'm struggling to find someone just to get that bit finished. And, uh, yeah. But um, hopefully it will get done before Christmas. You know, I was hoping it would all be done by the 20th. But, uh, hmm. So once the radiator is put in and changed, the, um, the, it needs, the pipes need to be boxed around and we need some more splash back around that bit. We've managed. I managed to source some splash back, some spare, so that's good. And um, worm. I'm going to do worm in the Academy in Orange Light that I rejected before. I think it will work for worm. Um, so, and I need the decorator back in because there's a lot of bits of touching up to do. So it's quite a lot of little bits to do still, which is a bit annoying, but uh, hey, it's getting there. Right, cushion. I'm going to do this cushion in a, in the dark orange, the cadmium orange deep that we use for these. If you've got the 120 set, pick a colour we haven't used yet. So I would pick, if there's a cadmium orange, rather than the deep, that's what I would use. I'm going to try and use this a bit lightly so it looks like a different orange. You could mix it with a lighter one, but I think if I just use it gently, it will work, look different. So that'll be good. Like that. Now, as I said, I think this is a cushion. Oh, that bit, I think that's a bit of blanket. Hold on. Going to use that terracotta light just to do that bit sure that's a bit like this edge of blanket. Okay, I want to use the cadmium orange deep again though on this cushion. I'm thinking I'm going to try and get it to a mid-tone between those two. Like that. And a bit here. Like that. And then Um, something in between. Mm. I think we've got a lot of yellow on the blanket. Maybe a little bit of brown again. Maybe the yellow ochre. I think we used that for the face, didn't we? And the biscuit. Oh, mm. I'm going to press really hard. Or layer up really hard. And try and make it look a bit different. What's that? I'm going to do it in that. And go all the way to the bottom. There we go. Now all we've got left is our plate and it's not going to... Now my plates are white. I like white plates, but that is not going to work with this um, picture. So... Hmm. What should we do? What's that colour? Light peach. I'm going to try the light peach. We used it for the ears, didn't we? But do it really lightly. So it just makes it look slightly off-white. Let's see if that's going to work. I'm going to try and make it a bit lighter in the middle. Because the plate would be shiny. I don't want to leave any completely white bits. It's going to look a bit odd. There we go. I 
think we're done. Oh, we've been squiffed this whole time. Sorry. Oops. So there she is snuggling up with her cup of tea. It could be a hot chocolate if you want to colour it a little bit darker. And her cookies. A really lovely picture. Um, I could do the raindrops in a sparkly colour or a metallic. But they would have to really be silver or blue because rain, you know. And I think... It's not going to look so autumnal with a silver. If I did them gold, it would look more autumnal, but it wouldn't work because rain isn't gold. So I think I'm just going to leave it. I'm not going to do that. You can do that if you wish. I'm just going to leave it. So there we go. So I think that is all done. So thank you very much for watching. I hope that was uh, fun. I will be doing some more out of this book, I'm sure. Um, maybe not until after sort of December because... You know, we're going to move into winter and Christmas pictures, really. I think there are some winter pictures in this book, though. But um, I'll probably be in, in the Morgan O'Brien's um, Christmas book more so. But uh, for now, thank you for watching. I um, hope you have enjoyed the rest of your day. And happy colouring. <laughs>